Hello, in this video, we're going to introduce De Moore's theorem. De Moore's theorem is named after Abraham De Moore. So we'll start by writing down a complex number. So let R times cosine theta plus I sine theta be a complex number, a complex number. And so this complex number is written in polar form, which is also called frig form. An alternative for this notation uh, would be r cis theta. So that would be an alternative for this notation. And another alternative, if you're familiar with it, would be r e to the i theta. So both of these are also acceptable substitutes for everything that follows. Then, for any positive integer n, so for any positive integer n, we have the following. We can raise this complex number to a power in a very convenient way. So I'm going to use a different color here, and I'm going to write down all three varieties um, so you can see how all of these are applied. So the first one, I'll use a bracket here, bracket r cosine theta plus i sine theta, parentheses, and then bracket. So if you raise this to the nth power, you basically raise the r to the nth power, and then the n goes inside the trig functions like this, cosine of n theta, it's pretty cool, plus I sine n theta. Really, really cool theorem, I think. So, really powerful. And we'll do an example in a minute. Uh, it's actually really simple to use. Alternatively, if we use the cis notation, by the way, cis stands for cosine I sine, this would be bracket R cis theta. I guess I don't need the parentheses there. Let me get rid of that. Since it's just cis, it makes it a little bit cleaner cis theta, and again we're raising this to the nth power, you get r to the n, cis n theta. Okay, and just to be really clear to make sure there's no confusion, um, what is cis theta? So cis theta, maybe I'll write it up here, cis theta is cosine i sine, so it's cosine theta plus i sine theta. So it's exactly the same thing as what you see here. So this is cis. Likewise, this is also equal to e to the i theta. So same thing, right, same thing. All of these are exactly the same. So continuing here with De Moore's, let's write it down using this exponential notation. So we have r e to the i theta, and that's being raised to the nth power, and this would be r to the n e to the i n theta. And this makes more sense to, for a lot of people. You're basically exponentiating the e, right? n times i theta is, you know, n times i theta, which is right here, n times i theta. So algebraically, this is the one that makes the most sense for people. So all of these, all three of these are considered De Moore's theorem. So let's go ahead and just do a, a simple example of using De Moore's theorem to raise a complex number to a power. And typically, um, when you do these, like in a classroom setting, they always say, don't use a calculator, you know, do it by hand, show all your work. Uh, but it's pretty, it's pretty simple. So let's start maybe with this one. Say we have bracket three, parentheses, cosine, and let's do three pi over four. So three pi over four plus i sine three pi over four. Parentheses, and then I guess we need one more parentheses here, right, to match this one here, and then, and then a bracket. And we're gonna raise this to the fourth power. Okay, we're gonna go to the fourth power this time. All right, let's go ahead and go through it. So the solution, pretty easy. All we do is using the formula, we raise the r, right, this is our, oops, this is our r, 
So that will be three to the fourth. And then the four goes inside the trig functions. So it'll be cosine of four times three pi over four. That's your N plus I sine of four times three pi over four. Okay, just like that. And let me just show you the formula up here just so you can see we're using it correctly. So it's R to the N and then cosine N theta, I sine N theta. So it's three to the N, N is four here. Cosine N theta, so N is four, theta is three pi over four. I sine N theta, N is four, theta is three pi over four. So very simple. So now we can clean this up. We can cancel these fours. Three to the fourth is 81. Um, that's because it's three squared times three squared which is nine times nine, which is 81. So pretty simple, so it's 81. Then we get the cosine of three pi plus I sine three pi. So to figure out uh, what the cosine of three pi is and what the sine of three pi is, what we can do is think about the unit circle. So I'll draw a picture here. So here's, here's the unit circle, the unit circle is a circle of radius one centered at the origin. And the unit circle is special because every ordered pair on the unit circle has the form cosine theta comma sine theta. So here, um, this is zero, but it's also two pi. So to get to three pi, you do one complete revolution and then you go one more, one, 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 one more half revolution. So this would be three pi, which is also pi. So we want the ordered pair here. Well, because it's the unit circle, um, this distance here is one. So the X coordinate is negative one. And you can see here we're on the X axis. So we're going up by zero. So the Y coordinate is one. Cosine is the X coordinate on the unit circle. So cosine of three pi would be negative one because that's the X coordinate. This is 81 times negative one plus I times and then sine of three pi would be the y coordinate at three pi, which is zero, so this is just zero. So we get 81 times negative one plus zero, and so we get the answer of negative 81, which is really, really nice. So that's how you use uh, De Moore's theorem. And yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, all you do again is you just raise r, this is your r, to this power, and then you just put the number inside the trig functions, and then you clean it up. And after that, um, you're good to go. Remember, R is called the modulus and theta is called the argument of the complex number. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.